ACEC is excited to announce that registration is now open for its fall conference taking place in Marco Island, Florida this October. That's right, after a year of Zoom and virtual meetings, we're excited to be bringing our fall conference back as an in-person event. And we can't tell you how excited we are to look forward to seeing you there in person for all of the content, networking, and education that the fall conference is known for. Log on to www.acec.org for more information. We can't wait to see you there. Welcome to Engineering Influence, a podcast from the American Council of Engineering Companies brought to you by the ACEC Life Health Trust. And today we are pleased to welcome the trust onto the program, Lindsay Simone uh, with the Life Health Trust to talk about a very important issue and actually a very popular issue. Um, if if our past shows are any indication, we, we did have a a, an author on last month that talked about this very issue of employee burnout and how to avoid it. And it was one of our most downloaded shows, which I think is an indication out there that uh, people people need to figure out some ways to manage stress uh, in this work from home, remote, you know, off and on again pandemic world that we live in. And uh, Lindsay, um, very pleased to have you on the show to talk about this. Um, you, you know, from your perspective at the trust, I mean, is, it, uh, is this something that you're hearing a lot about from your members? Absolutely, Jeff. And thank you for having us to discuss what, what we also feel is a very important topic. And we at the Trust have offered a comprehensive wellness program for going on 10 years now. And time and time again, our data suggested that engineering firms and engineers in general operate with much higher levels of stress than the general industry out there. Um, so it's even more significant for the, the engineers um, and all of those that are part of engineering firms. But to your point, with this enhanced uh, degree of complexity with the pandemic and life circumstances and things that are just out of our control, it, um, it really has brought a, a more focus on mental health and how do we support ourselves and take care of ourselves, but also as employers, how do we support those that, that work with us? Yeah, it, it, and it's not just, I mean, this is an issue that's being brought up everywhere. I mean, look at the Olympics and Simone Biles and, um, and of course, you know, recently, uh, you know, in the, in, in, with, with, with tennis, I mean, we have you know, athletes who are at the peak of their careers, peak uh, physical performance that are realizing that, that, that the stress or, or their mental place is, is just not there to compete. And, and the way that it's being received, I think largely by the media and the public, of course, there are going to be some people out there who, who take a different stance, but largely it's being addressed as a serious thing that, that mental, mental health, that, that people's levels of stress and just how they're feeling about doing what they do is something that needs to be taken into consideration. And, and, and again, you know, one of the things that, that is different is that there's a difference between stress and burnout, right? That, that the stress is one thing. Burnout is its own thing and, and it should be treated separately, right? Correct. Um, and it, 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 what you kind of look at it is stress is somewhat of that spice of life. Uh, it's just a factor in all of our everyday lives, whether that be just circumstances that come up um, that may be very specific, but you could also have very chronic uh, stress and sources of stress. Burnout is really differentiated by, and I'd say using the word extreme, um, stress to that extreme point of feeling just completely depleted, exhausted, unmotivated, unable to even do your normal daily activities of life. Um, and that's where it's so important that now there's this conversation about mental health. To your point, it's in the media and everyone is discussing it. And it really helps, you know, individuals to become more aware of how am I managing stress? Am I reaching that point where I can no longer function? And that's what ultimately everyone wants to avoid. You don't want to get to that type of a breakdown scenario. 
Yeah, because that that like as you mentioned, that's where it kind of goes beyond just the emotional into sometimes the physical realm where you have and it's just not work related it, it does bleed into everyday life it's not just not feeling motivated about uh the work that you're doing but then it's also outside of work um uh, those tasks or things that we have to do that motivation really does fall down because it's just this burnout is more of a more of a holistic thing it's it affects almost every aspect of your life Exactly. And even things where maybe you used to find enjoyment, things that you sh feel like you should be feeling fulfilled and, um, you know, being a part of your life and living it and enjoying it. Um, when you feel like that is no longer happening, you're not really as connected to those things that brought you joy. Yeah. <laughs> There's re That's really a, a very big red flag that you need to really look at and address some things that are maybe some underlying issues. So when firm members um, uh, come to you and say, you know, this is something that we're concerned about, our employee workforce is, you know, working remote, with all the pressures and stresses going on in the world, our business is actually busier now, we're, we're really pushing ahead, um, the expectation is there to be uh, performing at a high level. And we're concerned that our that our people are, may be, you know, burning out. Um, what do you? What tips? What guidance um, do you give them to take back to their teams to try to um, to to avoid this? Sure, there's a few ideas and strategies because you're really looking at you know a scenario that is sometimes confidential. Uh, you know, if you're an employer, you do have to respect the privacy of those individuals, but you also have their best interests in mind and you want to get them to connected to resources and tools that can help them to get out of this scenario or this situation that may be um, an issue for them. With Through the Life Health Trust, we've invested in a number of resources truly to support mental health and behavioral health. Uh, one, one thing I, I always suggest to employers is to explore what's currently available through your benefits package. Often uh, insurance carriers include embedded services like an employee assistance program that have, um, of course, mental health tools, but also financial planning tools, legal tools um, for someone going through a very big life change and that may need some extra support. Uh, on top of that, what we've seen with the pandemic is just an explosion in terms of virtual care and seeking out telemedicine um, from the comfort of your home or wherever you may be um, without being attached to potentially a stigma. Mm -hmm. uh, in the last year, we've seen just a lot more utilization of a mental health telemedicine visits. So you're connecting yeah. with a licensed uh, therapist or psychologist, psychiatrist over the phone, again, from the comfort of your home to be able to have that uh, provider's attention and just additional support that you may not get elsewhere. Yeah. And, I, you know, one of the other things that I think you mentioned is, is just that flexibility of work schedule, uh, which is, you know, increasingly, it's an interesting time that we're in because I think it's, it's almost like the, the world was moving towards this more flexible schedule or this more flexible environment and it needed a push. I don't think anybody expected the pandemic to be the push, but it seems like it's, it's here now. And this greater level of flexibility it's this weird time where we're evolving and it's that nothing certain and in this in the ground is still you know it's like we're stepping on sand and how do you balance that you balance your objectives the things that you need to get done at work but this greater flexibility of either working remotely or just having these uh more flex hours um you know what are you hearing from from firms about how they're handling this um is there any one strategy that seems to be winning out compared to others, or is there is it more of a, uh, a, a, a an approach that's taken by you know the the culture of the individual firm? 
I, I think it ultimately always comes down to the culture of the firm, and it may depend on the type of industry that you work in, uh, the types of projects uh, that you do uh, get involved in, but overwhelming majority of firms that we work with and that we hear from are moving towards what you said, a more flexible work environment. One where we now understand people are fully capable of working and producing from home, you know, regardless of whatever circumstances may be going on. So we're at that point where maybe people have now earned that right to be able to have partial time in the office, partial time at home. Um, also, just kind of considering all these new rules as we move back into the uh, the workspace that that helps employers to work through this transition. Um, but there's a lot of other kind of conversations that are happening too that, you know, there's all these distractions. Mm -hmm. No one were in an office, if your door is open, there may be constantly people coming in. Um, I think part of what employers are looking at is how do we give people the flexibility to prioritize how they do their work? Is it you know, sometimes I have to turn off my Outlook and turn off my Microsoft Teams. Mm -hmm. I can't take messages for one hour. I'm still doing my work, but I need to, um, I think it's also the employee's responsibility to speak up and say, this is the work environment that allows me to produce my best work. I, yeah. this is what I can do to uh, be a better team member too. If, you know, it, having that conversation of, of does that work for my employer and what works for me? So it's more again an open conversation and exploring all of this multitude of options that now are uh, within our grasp. Yeah, that's a really good point. I mean, this is a conversation, like you said, that has to happen. And I think that as long as it's the conversation is based on the premise that everyone's trying to do the reach the same goal, which is to perform and to deliver on you know their work people have realized that maybe during this time they work more effectively in a in a different environment or or a different way that that is the, that traditional um 9 to 5 in the office you know makeup and yeah you know, that flexibility of being able to say okay well we want to get the best from our people so how do we how do we navigate this um and one of the things that, that I think that is is something which is always going to be an issue now, I don't think there's a solution to this. It's the it's the when do you actually close the computer, mm -hmm. um, and when do you actually turn it off and walk away from it? Uh, because when you're home, it's around you 100 percent of the time, right? And and if it's always kind of there, looking at you and saying, "Hey, why don't you just log on for another extra 30 minutes, another hour?" Um, you know, what have you been? hearing from firms about setting boundaries. It, it's interesting because within the Life Health Trust, we were having that same issue. And for this last year, we had all of our employees set aside time when, when you take off time, when you use your PTO, you should not be engaging in your computer, in any of your emails. Is somewhat to your point, that's always easier said than done. Mm -hmm. We all have our phones. There's always that blinking light reminding you there's one more thing that you can do. So part of that is to, again, a personal responsibility. Um, and it kind of goes to the having a backup, have, being able to walk away knowing that things are taken care of. Again, easier said than done. Mm -hmm. uh, but that, I think, is extremely important to let employees prioritize the time that they have off. Um, and if you find that people are struggling, even have, letting them have some time off during the day. Yeah. Um, you know, having that flexible hour schedule where they can still do some of their personal items uh, while still having, you know, a full work day that our hours are more accommodating to their schedule. Yeah. And I think a, one one of the points that I know that 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 you've raised in in some of the materials you put out, I mean, it's that you know to avoid burnout and to avoid you know the 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 negative effects of of all this pressure that you're under to, to perform in a remote environment. Um, you know, it's that being 
you know, there is something to say about reaching out and being more sociable, you know, con you know contacting, you know, connecting with your coworkers or friends. And, and the good thing now, at least compared to where we were a year ago, when, when we were all locked into our houses and, 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 you know, essentially we were told that, you know, limit your exposure outdoors, it's opening up. So you were able to get out more and having that ability to leave the house, you know, see people actually go to events and things, you know, take advantage of that because, and do it safely, of course, and follow, you know, social distancing and, and everything that you should do if you're in an area where, you know, you, their transmission rates are high for, for the Delta variant, but still having that ability now should put a little bit of sense of normalcy back into things. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you think? Absolutely. Um, f having those opportunities to really rest, recover, are so key. And I think a lot of times people think of stress and I'm really a stronger person if I can just keep pushing through this. Yeah. Where ultimately that has such negative long-term impacts and you're going to experience more physical issues, emotional, um, mental, behavioral issues. And rather, it's more about setting aside some time to take care of yourself. Yeah. Um, you don't necessarily have to be taking long, you know, a very lengthy vacation and go to a beach. That's mm. That would be wonderful, of course. But uh, finding small pockets of time in your everyday life that can help you to find support, to be able to manage your stress. Like you said, you know, finding events, things that bring you joy, being around other people, even if it's just sending a, a message or picking up the phone and calling someone to talk about things. Yeah. Uh, there's look for those things that did motivate you that do bring you enjoyment and that's where you find the ability to recover to rest and essentially build resilience yeah. so when you come back and are faced with stress again you're able to deal with it and potentially even thrive in the face of the stress and that that kind of goes the build resilience part kind of goes back to kind of three r's that you've identified to overcome burnout and, 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 you know, recognizing and then watching for the signs, then reversing and seeking support for, uh, the stress that you're, you're under. And then, like you said, build resilience, which is, you know, take care physically, your, your, your take care of yourself physically and, and emotionally to, to maintain your health. And that, that the three of those combined seem to be a good formula for addressing, uh, burnout. Absolutely, because you don't want to necessarily get to the point where you are burnt out. That is a, a, t a really difficult thing to then overcome. Rather, looking at it as more of a spectrum, I want to figure out when I'm getting to that point and do something about it. Um, take that time to reverse, uh, reverse that stress and, again, ultimately feel that's how you build that strength and that resilience yeah. is really taking, ultimately taking care of yourself. Yeah, absolutely. So for our firms out there that, that want to expand their own offerings to their employees for emotional support and uh, to prevent burnout of their employees, um, who should they, who should they reach out to at the trust and, and what resources, you know, do they have available to them online or, or that can be delivered to them to, to help them kind of chart a path forward? Absolutely. So any firm that has medical coverage through the Life Health Trust has access to a few of our value added services that are meant to just improve health and well-being in a well-rounded way. I mentioned one of our programs, which is the Design Virtual Care Program, uh, where we offer general medical care tele, uh, via telemedicine visits, but we do have that capacity to do behavioral uh, and mental health visits uh, via, via the phone or video as well. Uh, through our comprehensive wellness program called Designed Wellness, there are a lot more tools that are meant to help build that resilience. Um, so there are things like uh, a meditation mindfulness program through will uh, to really take five minutes and have a breather, do some deep breathing activities. 
Uh, we also have different physical activity programs, uh, digital workouts like yoga or, or different activities that people may want to try. Uh, it's our package and our, our service of uh, these var various services are meant to meet people where they're at, to, that there's something in it for everyone, regardless of where you're at, health and well-being wise today, um, but truly to help support you for the long term, to help you find things that help you to manage stress on a daily basis and avoid burnout in the long term. Great. Well, we will make sure to uh, provide a link to the trust in the show notes. And uh, I do understand, uh, I guess, uh, kind of before we before we wrap up, uh, you have a uh, your annual meeting happening pretty soon up in Anchorage. We uh, do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, we're well, uh, meeting with our board of trustees next week. That's great. Um, and um, anything that you're that you're looking forward to discussing up at that meeting, or or anything that you want to preview before the meeting takes place? Sure. Um, I think the top of mind for us is always what are the emerging trends, um, and it's again great timing to have this conversation around mental health. There's some um, uh, new programs that we're exploring for 2022 and just getting feedback from our members about what's working, what's not. Um, so that's a, a big focus as well as just continuing um, the momentum that we have with all of our different uh, medical and ancillary products, mm -hmm. as well as uh, those people that are engaged in our wellness program today. Perfect. Well, uh, good luck uh, up at that meeting and safe travels up to Alaska. Uh, I, I would imagine a, a good time to go to Anchorage would be August. <laughs> That's preferable. That's preferable. It's better than better. Hey, guys, we're going to meet in Anchorage in February. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if I'll join for that one. Although I am from Chicago, but. Yeah, that, okay, that's true. Uh, just, just the same cold, just fewer bears in Chicago, except for football. Um, exactly. So, so, Lindsay, I do appreciate you taking the time to join us on a very important subject, which is employee burnout and how to prevent it. And uh, we look forward to uh, future programs with the Life Health Trust. And thank you for sponsoring the podcast, of course. Uh, it's uh, always great to. Uh, to get support for uh, one of our uh, one of our key communications vehicles, so we do appreciate it. Absolutely, thank you for having us. Absolutely, and again, this has been the Engineering Influence Podcast, brought to you by the American Council of Engineering Companies, and we're going to see you next time. Take care, everyone.